Hello and welcome to Arithmetica and the second video in our introduction of proof and reasoning. In the first episode, we briefly introduced the notion of proof in which we primarily focused on the difference between mathematical proof and scientific proof. In this video, we focus entirely on deductive logic. Indeed, we explained in the first video of this series that a mathematical proof constitutes a process of deductive reasoning. Thus, a good understanding in deductive reasoning is an essential prerequisite in constructing proofs in mathematics. We will also continue our coverage of deductive logic in a separate series of videos concerning Arithmetica's introduction to propositional logic. So be sure to check out those videos also. We begin with a short introduction before providing some further insight by way of some simple examples. There is a deep-rooted connection with the philosophical study of logic and that of language. Its origins can be traced at least as far back to the work of the ancient Greek philosophers, and none more so than the so-called father of logic himself, Aristotle. The remarkable work of Aristotle's prior analytics, composed in the form of six books on logic and scientific methodology, including his writings on deductive reasoning, which became known as his syllogisms. So, what exactly is a syllogism? Well, Aristotle's notion of a syllogism is a process of logical deduction, where the conclusion is supported by two premises, a major premise and a minor premise. There are two important terms used here, premise and deduction. And as the description of a syllogism suggests, in logic, a premise is a statement which acts as the foundations for a logical argument, where one can derive a conclusion. A premise for a logical argument need not necessarily be true, it is simply a proposition, but when they are true, they are often in the form of some fundamental truth, and as such usually called axioms. A logical deduction, however, is the formal process of deriving from such premises in a manner that is truth-preserving. That is, the truth of the conclusion is guaranteed on the proviso that the premises in force are true. This is known as logical validity. Consequently, a syllogism can either be sound or valid, the distinction being that it is sound if the conclusion exists as a logical consequence of true premises, while a valid syllogism is of a weaker form and only requires the conclusion to be a logical consequence, irrespective of the truth of either of the major or minor premises in force. We now provide four examples of syllogisms. A simple and frequently used example of a sound syllogism is where we take the major and minor premises to be, respectively, all men are mortal and Socrates was a man both of which are clearly true. We can then provide the logically valid and sound conclusion that, therefore, Socrates was mortal. An example of a valid but unsound syllogism is in taking the major premise to be all elephants are pink and the minor premise as Nelly is an elephant. A valid but arguably unsound conclusion would therefore be Nelly the elephant is pink. But 
there can also be a failure in providing a valid deduction, despite at first glance it seeming reasonable. Suppose the major and minor premises are respectively the brightest star, if visible, in the night sky is the planet Venus, and the star that is currently in my sights is the brightest star that I can see in the night sky. Consider then the conclusion, therefore, the star I'm currently viewing must be the planet Venus. Can you see why it is not valid? To test for validity, we need only accept the truth of the two premises, but show how the conclusion could be false. An obvious possibility would be if the planet Venus was not at the time of viewing visible. For example, it might be obscured by clouds or by a building. It might even be because it's not possible to see the planet Venus without being able to look through the Earth, owing to Venus being visible from the Earth's hemisphere opposite to where you are located. We might then be looking at the second, third or even fourth brightest star in the night sky. Clearly the clue is contained in the major premise with the emphasis on if visible, as well as in the minor premise with that I can see. It would therefore also rely on your own observational skills in being certain that you really are looking at the brightest star currently visible in the night sky. If, however, we determined that the planet Venus was visible in the night sky where we were viewing, and that the star currently being observed was indeed the brightest for that hemisphere, then we could then provide the valid conclusion that we had indeed correctly identified the planet Venus. And so clearly some care is in need in ensuring logical validity. Consequently, the above argument is not a valid deduction. There are also syllogisms that appear logically invalid, but are in fact perfectly valid. Let us first express as a sort of riddle. Every animal likes my pet cat, and my pet cat only likes me. What am I? We can answer this riddle by recognising that we can write the major premise as Every animal likes my pet cat, and the minor premise as my pet cat only likes me. We can then conclude that I am my own pet cat. This seems absolutely absurd, but it is completely valid. Here's the proof. Since my cat is an animal, it follows from the major premise that my cat must like itself. But then, given that by the minor premise, my cat only likes me, it immediately follows that I must be my own pet cat. The logic is perfectly valid. The problem is that the premises are unrealistic. But regardless, if true, so must be the conclusion. Another important feature in logic is that in general, it is concerned with the evaluation of form rather than content or meaning of the argument. Consequently, whether the argument or indeed the premises are true is the domain of the appropriate discipline that governs such matters. For example, the truth of the premises, all dogs are mammals and Labradors are dogs, has its truth determined not by logic but rather that of the study of taxonomic classification of known species of life on Earth. But logic allows us to deduce that from the structure of the premises alone, all Labradors are mammals. We will see that in our introduction in propositional logic, otherwise known as the logic of statements, demonstrates this principle of structure over content in a manner that is very evident. 
it is the branch of logic concerned with the study of constructing new propositions or statements from old to form what are known as compound statements via the use of logical connectives. I hope that you found the video informative or at the very least enjoyed it in some way. If you wish to leave any comments, then please feel free in doing so in the comment section no less. In the next video in the series, I will introduce a different form of logical inference called induction. And so, until next time, it's goodbye from Arithmetica.